So what exactly is a shackle? Well it's just a connector with a quick release mechanism which in this case is a pin um, but it might also be a soft shackle. We're not going to talk about soft shackles in this video but um, there's your quick release mechanism for a soft shackle. So with metal shackles they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes from this tiny little one here rated for 330 kilograms all the way up to this much larger one here which is rated for 12 tons. Metal shackles come in a few different designs as well. There's the bolt shackle, there's the round pin shackle, but the most common type in four-wheel driving is the screw pin shackle, so called because you've got a pin here and you screw it in like so. And there's typically two that we use, um, the D shackle here because it's in the shape of a D and the bow shackle there because it's in the shape of a bow, the bow shackle is more common. Now the parts of a shackle, we've got here the body and then we've got the pin. Within the pin we've got the thread of the pin and then we've got the shoulder of the shackle. We call this a screw pin bow shackle because it's a bow, it's got a pin and it screws in like so. So rated shackles versus unrated shackles. The rated shackle means that it is rated to a specific working load limit or WLL. So you can be sure that it's not going to break up until whatever that working load limit is and that's embossed on the side here. Whereas this shackle here, it is um, not rated and who knows what it could break out, you've really got no idea, it's not been tested to any standard. How can you tell the difference? Well there's a couple of different ways to do it. One is that the um, rated shackle will have its rating embossed on the side there. Second, the pin is typically a different colour from the body and it could be any different colour, it could be orange or yellow or black but it's typically a different, different colour. And the third way is that the pin is actually a slightly thicker diameter than the body, whereas with the unrated shackle there's no markings on it on either side. Pin is the same diameter as the body um, and it's also the same colour. By the way, the um, rated shackles typically have no markings on one side. The markings are typically only on one side. So you need to check both sides to see if it's a rated shackle. Okay, then we've got the um, rating here S 22 mil and there's a, another example here that's also S rated as well. A few different um, types. So shackles come in, in two ratings, um, S and M. The difference is the strength of the material. So an S rated shackle and an M rated shackle could be rated to the same working load limit but the S rated shackle actually uses is made of a stronger material so it's lighter and smaller than the M rated shackle and the M rated shackle is a little bit more ductile um, as well. So typically we would use S um, standard shackles in four wheel drive recovery as opposed to M rated and the 22 mil here that stands for the um, pin diameter. Um, not always, you don't always see that on all shackles but um, you do see it on quite a few of them. D shackle versus bow shackle. Now both of these are rated shackles. Again they've got um, different colour pins to the body. The pin is a greater diameter than the body there. Uh, no ratings on the other side but there are ratings here. So what's the difference between the two? Well it's literally just a shape and bow shackles are typically used for four wheel drive recovery. The reason is it's much easier to get a strap in this wider bow area here than it is there and also the bow shackles are made for a something of a side load like that whereas D shackles are just made for a straight pull like so. So bow shackles are what we use in four wheel drive recovery for those reasons. So working load limits. 
the embossing here says WLL 6.25 tons. Now that's, you, to be honest, you'd, you'd be struggling to exceed six tons in many uh, four-wheel drive recoveries, but this actually won't break at 6.25 tons. That's a working load limit, which means that it's going to break at six times that, which is a bit over 37 tons. So that's simply the fact that it's safe to use it up to six and a quarter tons, and that comes from the rigging hoisting industry there where they've got massive load factors, uh, safety factors, which we simply don't have in full drive recovery there. So even if you've got a relatively, um, let's say small, like two tons here, you know, um, you can go up to two tons in that quite safely and it won't break, whereas a lot of other full drive recovery gear like snatch straps, etc., if that says two tons, it will probably break at two tons, maybe even a bit before, but this will definitely not break at two tons. You multiply by six, it's more likely to break at 12 tons. Now one thing you want to avoid doing with your shackle is loading it like so, or look like that it really wants to be absolutely square on but the thing is that will tend to sort of move so um, that that causes a problem what you can do is what I've done here is just put some plywood spaces in like that and then that will just keep it central and a nice straight pull regardless of um, the angle of, of the pull okay so care of shackles then um, they do need some care and attention even if it's basically a bit of dumb metal and um, what you're looking for here is cracks um, and fatigue there's none on this one and a really good way to test the um, integrity of a shackle is that the pin should just go straight in and do up pretty easily now if that doesn't happen maybe the shackle is a bit buckled um, or damaged in some way and also this um, should, should go pretty much all, all the way home there with and it not not stick out a bit. and again you can see the other side that's gone all the way through so that's um, pretty much how you know that a shackle is in good condition and safe to use if it's in any way damaged buckled bent don't use it Okay, now soft shackles um, are fantastic. They're light, they're strong. Um, there's a you can make a giant sort of closed loop out of them. Re really good, fantastic, safe bits of kit. But there's some places where they're not ideal. So here we've got an older snatch block, for example, pulled that round, and you can see here that um, you know that's a very very sharp angle. I wouldn't want to use a soft shackle for that because I think it would, it would get damaged. So that's where you're much better off having a metal shackle like that and you know that metal shackle is not going to get damaged. Now for a, this type of snatch block here, this ARB one, I think that is okay to use with a soft shackle because the radius is is much greater there so I, I would be comfortable using a soft shackle in, um, for this particular snatch block. Right so when you're using a shackle for full drive recovery the advice is put the shackle in and turn it till it's tight and back it off half a turn. So there's a couple of points to note with that. First of all, make sure that the shackle's gone all the way through. So in other words, it should just about be um, a little bit proud of the body there. The pin should just, just be sticking out just a little bit there. If it doesn't go all the way through, that could be because there's grit or debris or damage to the shackle. And obviously, the, the, the less the pin threads into the body, the weaker it is, which comes back to the next point, actually. So you go all the way and come back half a turn or so and then that will actually stop the shackle binding up um, but if you do that then it actually slightly weakens the shackle because it's not quite um, uh, particularly if you put any form of side load on it it's not quite as strong as it could be so if you're going to put significant side loads on it then you should go all the way through. Now, you then need to maybe have difficulty getting it undone. That's where you can just use a shifter. And I find this, that should give you enough leverage to undo it. Putting a screwdriver in there can work, but it's, I don't find that as, if, as effective, um, particularly if it's a weaker screwdriver, but a shifter always seems to be able to do the job. If you're going to join two shackles together, join them in bow to bow as opposed to pin to pin. The reason is that way you avoid side loads. You see here it won't even go pin to pin. Now 
uh, two shackles of the same size trying to join them together the pins aren't actually touching each other and that's just going to create unwarranted stress on the body it's not designed for And actually side load a shackle like so provided the pins all the way in and you can go up to 50% of the rated load. If the straps are at 45 degrees then you can go up to 75% of the rated load. The load on the pin should not be angled so you don't want any, ang any angles such as this it should just be a straight line pull like that never at an angle. That sort of angle is what you put on the bike. And obviously a straight line pull is 100% of the rated load. And another way you can rig for this sort of pull is using the Factor 55 load distribution plate. So here we've got a four-wheel drive hitch recovery receiver, working load limit of five tonnes, and it can go in one of two orientations. It can go vertically or it can go horizontally. And it's secured to the hitch using a pin and um, secured with a split pin, which I won't bother put in for the moment. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of each. We'll put it in um, horizontally first, which is typically how people would normally do it. And that means that the shackle would go in like that. Now the problem with this approach is that if you have a horizontal change of direction like that then two things happen. One, you side load the shackle and that's really bad um, for it. Secondly, you actually have a significant amount of abrasion on the strap here as it moves around like so. If you imagine this is under two or three tons of force here, that's a lot of pressure and that can actually significantly damage the strap as it goes around. And of course you can change that to the vertical orientation and now we're no longer side loading the shackle and we're not getting that abrasion as we did there. However, if the um, strap needs to move up and down vertically, then you will get abrasion. Now because most four-wheel drive recoveries have minimal vertical movement and it's more horizontal, I would generally tend to run with my recovery hitch receiver and shackle in the vertical position here and I also put the pin up here so if it does become loose then it's not going to drop out underneath. The same principle applies when you are connecting a metal shackle to a recovery point. You can see here that there would be significant abrasion of the strap on the shackle and also the shackle is significantly side loaded at times as well. The better way to do it is to put the bow of the shackle through the recovery point and that way you avoid side loading the shackle and there's no potential abrasion on the strap that you're putting through the shackle. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook and YouTube for more information about cars, content, towing and whatever else I can find interesting.